In this week's podcast, we have the pleasure to have with us Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs and Diaspora of the Republic of Kosovo, Donika Gervala Schwarz. I want to welcome you, Madam Deputy Prime Minister, and thank you for having this discussion in Eliamep about the future of Kosovo. Thank you very much for your invitation and for the opportunity to talk about Kosovo today. More than two decades have passed since Slobodan Milosevic's campaign of ethnic cleansing and genocide tore through the Balkan Peninsula. Are the effects of the Kosovo War still present or they belong to the past in Kosovo? Your father and your uncle were victims also of this war that went on for many decades even before the 90s. They were shot in Germany by the Yugoslav Secret Service in 1982. That is correct, isn't that so? That's correct. My father has been a writer and a journalist and musician. And my father belongs to the dissidents of the Tito communist regime. Um, he uh, was forced to flee the country in 1979. And after we, he went to Germany and we as family, our mother with us children, uh, went uh, to Germany too one month later. And then the secret service of the old Yugoslavia came to Germany to kill my father with, together with my uncle and a guest a friend of them. So um, this uh, conflict has, is not that new in our region. And it was at that time a mix of the communist uh, mentality, dictatorship, and the national uh, nationalist problems that uh, were very present. But now, if you are in Kosovo, you will see some traces of the war in the buildings, in the roads, but most of them in the soul of uh, people who have faced in a very young age uh, that cruelty of war and genocide and uh, even uh, if even um, if we have the most optimistic uh, people in Europe um, when you talk with them about uh, past times you will see that traces are there how do the two communities live in Kosovo these days we have 2022 um, you have a European perspective you want to become a member of the European Union. Uh, I hope that the European Union wants all the Western Balkans in their family, because it's in the European family, because I believe that's very important. So how do the two communities manage to live together now? In Kosovo, you will find the most European uh, people, because um, our uh, polls tell us that uh, the support for the EU is higher than 90%, that's much more than in member states of the EU, and for NATO uh, higher than 93%. So for Kosovo is very clear, our way, our future is in the, the European Union. But at the same time, I must say that the European Union should not see uh, the Western Balkan countries as an appendix, uh, because the, if you see the map, uh, the Western Balkans belongs uh, to the EU and um, you know if you close one perspective uh, people start thinking about alternatives and uh, it's in the interest of the region and in the interest of the European Union that democratic uh, countries of the Western Balkan uh, become as soon as possible members and so motivate the others who are still fighting uh, for more democracy uh, to become better and then to join the EU. Nobody can tell us when this will be, but I'm very optimistic that uh, this part of Europe will be part of the European Union too. Well, um, and that can be done, you believe there is a future even without the recognition by Serbia, Belgrade, without restoring the relations with Serbia? It will be for Serbia and for us much more difficult the way to the European Union if we don't uh, have the mutual recognition. And that's why we sit with Serbia in Brussels uh, since 11 years with not much progress in the very important topics and this is something that uh, should be changed because for the people of both countries it's important to leave um, to leave the way open for integration where people want to be 
if you see for Kosovo it's no question at all uh, what our way is but I think that it's in the interest of the Serbian society to face the past uh, to see what has happened and then to go together with the neighbors with a new spirit uh, with uh, it's 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 not you don't lose your face if you apologize about crimes you have committed in the past so it's in the hands of Serbia to open the door and to let us go as neighbors in a future where both of our countries belong in. You have a new government in, in Kosovo. Are you optimistic that uh, they will bring something new even in the negotiations, even in the talks with Serbia in Brussels? We have since March uh, a new government. Uh, we have won in February last year uh, the elections with more than 50% of the seats in the parliament. We have a huge support in the population because our um, our commitment is for jobs and justice. And so um, this government is very committed on um, taking the responsibility for the heavy uh, issues too. We are not escaping our responsibility in talking uh, with Serbia, but we need to have a good plan to the future. And I think this government is prepared for that. Well, um, you immigrated in Germany, you told us that when you were young, for other reasons. But now uh, Kosovars are immigrating also. They are going uh, to Germany, they are going to Switzerland. Mm -hmm. and, um, and Kosovo is depending a lot on international powers for its well-being mm -hmm. and for its uh, economic financial status. Do you think that you can gain also your uh, economic uh, independence in the decades that, that comes so that Kosovo can stay in Kosovo? Uh, in the last uh, 10 years, we have uh, faced an immigration of more than 150,000 people. Because when people have no trust in their own institutions and they have no trust in the future of their children, they leave. So one of our aims is to make the life better for everybody in the country so that people don't need, young skilled people, young families don't need to leave the country. And we believe that with the reforms which are very important for our country, with improving democracy and the rule of law, because the economy does not prosper when you have corruption in your country and um, having a rule of law uh, is a very important uh, mission of uh, our government and it's a very broad uh, um, support of people in that. We know that the way through the reform will be not an easy one and I don't need to tell you in Greece how difficult it is when you take reforms very serious but it's no other way. So we have a huge diaspora, not only now, but we have since the 60s, we have this uh, generation of people going to work like Greece, uh, to, to work in countries like Germany for, uh, for simple jobs. Then we have the political immigration in the 80s and 90s. And uh, this diaspora um, is now the biggest asset that we have uh, as, as the Republic of Kosovo because they are very, very supportive of um, our families and our economy. Just to give you an example, we have a, a GDP of uh, 2.7 billion and only in the last, in the, in the first nine months of the last year, the diaspora brought more than 1 billion in the country. So we don't get so much money from uh, international institutions as we get from our diaspora. And our aim is to make this diaspora to use as bridge between our small and weak economy and the economies of uh, the, the more prosperous countries, stronger countries, so that having the know-how, having the expertise, of our diaspora and bring that home 
with the investments that they can bring in Kosovo. I think that this is a good way of having a small uh, economic uh, uh, miracle in our small country. Do you see the two communities in, in Kosovo living in peace together without animosities in the next years? But if you see the facts, uh, the communities are living uh, peaceful uh, in Kosovo because there, there, there are no ethnic uh, uh, influenced conflicts between the people. And if I am honest, I must say we don't really have a problem uh, between the Serbs and the Albanians in Kosovo. We have a problem between our uh, Republic and Belgrade because Belgrade thinks uh, they have the right to speak in the name of the Serbs, of our citizens in Kosovo. And if you talk directly to them, they not very rare feel uh, misused uh, for political reasons. The problem is not only the Serbs, but others in Kosovo have not that standard of life that they deserve for themselves and their children and this fits for Serbs, Albanians, Turks, Bosniaks and uh, others too. So we have to work uh, because we are the government representing these people to make even their life much better so that they uh, build this loyalty to the country uh, they live. Well, <clears throat> Athens has always been fully supportive of the European process uh, of, of Kosovo, uh, despite, uh, we must say yes. that, being one of the EU non recognizers We are one of mm -hmm. the countries in the European Union that we have not recognized uh, Kosovo. How do you see the, uh, our relationship evolving? the relations between Greece and Kosovo. Uh, we saw that our foreign minister went to Kosovo, um, uh, uh, the two prime ministers, the Greek and yes. the Kosovo prime minister met. Um, we see uh, another uh, air, fresh yes. air in our relationship. Mm -hmm. Maybe I start 1992 at the moment as uh, the then uh, minister, uh, prime minister of Greece invited our president, the founder of our state, President Rugova, to visit Greece. It was the first international invitation for our president who was elected from the people but not recognized from Serbia. And we have a good tradition of cooperation. Now, this phase is really incredible because uh, beside the fact that Greece does not formally recognize the independence of Kosovo and the state, the Republic of Kosovo. We have a great cooperation only in the last year. We have had more than 200 million euros Greek investments in our country. So uh, we recognize and we see the and we, uh, we applaud the new um, potential that Greece shows on being more present in our region because the Balkans is not just our six small countries. The Balkans is uh, we see as Balkans, uh, Greece, Croatia, Slovenia and others. So we are very interested in deepening the cooperation. Uh, we are not pushing for indep independence uh, recognition, but uh, what we push is for more trade, more economy, more people's exchange, more political uh, conversations, more cultural exchange, because um, that's how cooperation works. Uh, we are not focused on uh, and on, on, on showing what divides us, we are really very focused on showing what joins us and the potential of cooperation with Greece is enormous. And now uh, there is the liaison office in Kosovo and in, yes. uh, in Athens. And do you think that also will, uh, will help yeah. in our relationship between Greece and, and mm. Kosovo? We have since years uh, a liaison office uh, uh, of Greece in Kosovo and um, we have an uh, excellent experience of cooperation with that liaison office. We have had a trade office uh, months ago in, in Athens and meanwhile after the, the visit of uh, my colleague uh, Dendias in Kosovo, this, uh, we have upgraded the status of the office and now it's called Interest Office uh, of Kosovo here. And um, 
I think that through our offices uh, we um, maintain a good cooperation, but that's not the only way because uh, the direct communication between the capitals and the businesses and others is very important as well. So um, we see a progress since uh, last June in the political conversations uh, and we are ready to establish um, to establish um, constant um, conversations, consul consultations between our two countries so that we can identify, uh, for example, in energy, in renewables, in education, in digitalization and all the fields you can name them. And we are very interested in, in deepening that. At the same time, I really believe now that the tensions are very high in our region. Now that we have, for example, in Bosnia-Herzegovina, a very uncertain uh, future, nobody knows if we are going to face a war again or if we are going uh, to, to avoid that. And it needs the engagement of everybody, not just of the region, but of European Union, United States uh, and all the others to, to uh, help to um, escape that uh, danger of a real war in the Balkans. And that's why what I believe that if the five non-recognizing countries would recognize Kosovo very soon, it would, it would be a clear signal to others in the region and third parties who influence the region very much like Russia, that the borders in the Balkans are a done deal. We are not going to talk anymore about borders in the Balkans because every time we talk about borders in the Balkans, we face war and nobody of us wants a war, not Greece, not Kosovo, not Bosnia-Herzegovina. So it's important to send the clear message and the recognition of Kosovo by the five EU members who have not yet done that would be a clear message to Serbia and to Russia that this is the reality. We are going to recognize altogether the reality and now let us go forward and see what we can do together. Madam Deputy Prime Minister, I thank you very much for this discussion. Thank you. I thank you very much for this opportunity and I wish you all the best. Thank you.